We are going to start our workshop on the bid for the renovations at Prism Scott Elementary School as part of the Buildings for Our Future project. I want to welcome Mark Lee and Lisa Sawin. I'm not sure if Emily's and Emily, hello. Thank you so much for being here with us again tonight. And I'm going to hand it over to the superintendent. Just to say, um, I'm glad it's not past midnight. And I'm sure you're also glad of that. And the fact that this is the last of our three, um, you know, in rapid succession. So we organized this um, as you, um, as those who are closest to this process know, we're not scheduled to go until the end of April, but because of the board's schedule in April with um, the April break, we decided to move this up a, a couple of weeks. So I appreciate uh, Harriman's efforts to get everything um, positioned uh, for this uh, ahead of schedule. So thank you, um, Mark, Lisa, and Emily for your work on this and you know all of your work um, up to date and the fun is just beginning i know um i see mr stilfin and mr sherwood um both are here um, we have a ton of work ahead of us with the three renovations but um, this is moving and i'm just really grateful for all of you so with that i'm going to turn it over to mark mark or lisa i don't know who's leading off well uh we'll do a little tag teaming here but uh, thank you very, very much. It's delightful to be with all of you at a, this evening hour. Uh, and uh, we will present the information in a similar format to the other two projects that you folks have seen in this first part of the uh, process to uh, have you approve us going to bid. And as Superintendent Botana mentioned, this is the third of the three for this. This is the Presumpscot uh, Elementary School. And so uh, with that, the material that we will cover includes a um, review of the floor plan. In this case, it's just one floor. There's the detailed scope, uh, and that's the items that are included in the project uh, and we'll review the highlights of those and we'll review the renderings, the exterior and interior rendering that's been done to date. We'll review the project budget and its uh, costs both uh, the, for the Presumpscot project but also relative to the overall BFOF projects as we've done for the other two schools. We'll review the lead uh, point uh, um, progress, and then we'll look at where we are with what we call the next steps, which is really the schedule, where where we are and uh, what is left uh, until we go to bid. And so with that, uh, we'll move to the floor plan and similar color coding that you have seen on the others. There's green, which indicates the new construction and so those are the additions and what's notable with Presumpscot is the if you look at the existing which is uh, identified with the gray and the blue and the green um, as the new you can see that that the really the additions comprise a fairly substantial expansion of the school itself and uh, and and that's uh, Presumpscot is one of the smaller schools in the district and so um, the um, uh, a lot of the addition is simply to replace the three modular classroom buildings that uh, right now exist to the rear of the school, uh, almost in the same location where the addition in green is shown going. The addition encompasses a kindergarten wing, so we're uh, creating three kindergarten rooms and a pre-K room. and. The reason that uh, we are showing those as the new construction is that kindergarten rooms have a higher square foot requirement than a standard classroom. So they're, they're slightly larger and they um, uh, have toilet rooms uh, within the spaces themselves. And so for those reasons, uh, it um, 
uh, made sense to purposefully construct the kindergarten rooms and the pre-K room as new spaces. We also have art and music as separate spaces, which uh, they currently have to share space. And so that's, uh, that's also shown uh, in the upper right-hand corner with storage and kiln. Uh, and so Presumpscut, like the Lyseth and Reiki and Longfellow will now have uh, a uh, complement of the art and music rooms with their storage uh, and kiln and appropriate casework for, for those. We also do have a cafeteria and warming kitchen uh, at Presumpscut, and so that's identified uh, at this location right here. And then there are a series of smaller specialist rooms or um, and those uh, for such functions as speech, the lit coach, math instruction, uh, and Title I. So uh, and an important aspect that we're also, we've, we've uh, built in similar spaces to those that we've done in the other schools and, and thinking about those pull-out spaces or those informal learning spaces, we have two that are identified at, with the word nest. One is over here in the kindergarten wing and one is a touchdown space uh, in this portion of the building right here. And those are important spaces for, uh, for small group work or pull-out uh, work uh, for individual uh, uh, learning um, or one-on-one -on -one with the instructor. Uh, the other important addition is the administration and similar to what we're doing with the other schools to create a secure entry vestibule where the administration uh, has the ability to see uh, folks entering the building, um, to vet them before uh, buzzing them if, in, if you will, uh, past a secure vestibule. Uh, so also included in that administration area is a reconfigured nurse area, which as we've uh, again witnessed during the pandemic, it's important to have um, enough space and, um, and the ability to isolate a room within that space. And so that is um, now uh, this, the um, case with the reconfigured nurse uh, moved into the new area. Uh, the lobby stays uh, primarily the way it is now, but there'll be a skylight that incorporates some nice natural light coming into it. That'll be a smaller version of of uh, a similar experience to the Lyseth School, where that, uh, upon entering the building, you have a nice place to to uh, receive, gather, touch down, um, and orient yourself within the building. The um, there's also renovations to toilet rooms and uh, the inclusion of more single user toilet rooms that have the uh, advantage of being uh, available for staff or uh, they can also be used uh, for students as well. The gray area, the light gray area is representing a majority of the existing building uh, is identified as a uh, very light renovation and that uh, will receive building system upgrades and we'll review those in a moment. But a lot of the very light renovation uh, is really, there's not a lot of work in those rooms of the building. We, we originally had um, uh, shown scope uh, in those, but uh, as, uh, as you all remember in the adjustment for the budget and the costing that we encountered early on in the project, uh, we focused on um, replacing the portable structures and using the money to, to create those additions. And, um, and the uh, trade-off was not as much work in the classroom areas. Uh, the blue areas are heavy renovation. And so those will, will essentially, uh, sometimes the word used is gut, they'll be gut the space, there'll be all demo, demolition um, of finishes and systems in those spaces, and then they'll be reconstructed. So those are, are uh, have a lot of work in, in those areas. So, so those are kind of the three different categories and, uh, and depicted with the colors give you a sense of just exactly what work is gonna happen in the building. So we'll move from the, the diagram of the plan to the tables and, and um, there's a lot of information on them and uh, some of the information feels like it's repetitive, but, um, and try to highlight the important areas uh, without necessarily going through every 
one of them. Excuse Mark, Ms. Bondo has a question. I'm sorry, yeah? Yeah, I just want before, I, yeah, I would like to understand the plan. Can we go back to, yes. Can I, I, I just, just to understand when I look at the present cut and uh, when we have the new construction, when we have the, from the existing building, the new construction will be, will be taking place where we have the, the, the current front uh, of our building or it's going to be on the side or it's going to be at the back because I look at the DNV on the side and then I just, just to see the, 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 the surface that we have. So can you just clarify? Sure. That Absolutely. Uh, so the entrance of the building currently is down at the bottom of the page. And so as you think of the parking, the guest parking would be actually kind of off of the bottom of the page. Okay. And so you currently enter at this location. So you'll continue to enter there. Mm -hmm. And okay. so this portion is new uh, on that front area. There's, there's currently the flagpole in the front and there's some seating in that area uh, right in the front of the school. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to bump out a little bit there. And then the, the uh, athletic field is on the back where I don't know if you can see my cursor spinning, but yeah. that's where the athletic field is. And, the, and there's sort of a pays, paved area right behind here. And the portables are over in this area uh, currently. And so this addition will go in the back of the building, kind of where the portables are. Is that helpful? Yes, that makes sense. Now I can follow much better. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So the first one is the whole building upgrades. And so that will be done in both the light gray, the very light renovation, and in the blue areas, the heavy renovation. And this is similar to some of the scope that we've uh, shown in the other school project as well. So the, the upgrades that all schools get are a public address system. Uh, and that's one that can be zoned. Um, and so you can address different areas of the building if needed, but it's the ability to uh, send out audible messages throughout the school. The next one is the new uh, cabling for, uh, for data uh, and communications. The next item is clocks, a, a, um, an, uh, a centralized clock system throughout the building. Uh, the next one's an important one. It's the uh, fire sprinkler system. So currently, uh, Presumpt Scott does not have a sprinkler system in it. And so this provides an important uh, life safety upgrade to the facility. Uh, and so there'll be piping to bring the sprinklers throughout the building. There'll be a new fire alarm system, another important life safety improvement. Uh, and then with respect to security, there'll be uh, security cameras installed throughout the building uh, and both inside and outside. Uh, we'll have access control. So the ability to uh, control both uh, monitor and control. So you'll know if doors are open or left open. You'll also have the ability to control and, um, and there'll be a log of who enters at what locations in the building. Uh, we'll also upgrade uh, accessibility, the ADA in improvements, and that is in areas of uh, the, um, cl the uh, toilet rooms as well as other features throughout. But the, the nice thing with uh, Presumpscut is that it's a single level. So the, the challenges of uh, an elevator like we we're putting in in Longfellow, um, we, don't, we don't have that expense here. So, um, but we will be making other improvements uh, some of the aspects of ADA are also things that are um, life safety features, such as the fire alarm system. And then replacement of outlets with tamper resistant outlets. And so that's kind of our standard we put in elementary schools is that uh, just a safety feature on those. Uh, continuing the improvements to the classrooms, uh, it's similar to the other projects will be new instruction technology on a teaching wall in the classroom. So that's uh, a writing surface as well as the projectors. And then uh, moving into the blue areas of the building or the renovation and the scope included in those. So the lobby, as we'll show you in a minute from, from a rendering, 
uh, includes a nice new uh, skylight in the middle to bring some nice natural light into the center of the building. We'll have some seating areas within it, uh, similar to what was provided at Lyseth. Uh, we'll have new finishes in the way of flooring and paint. Uh, and, uh, and so as you come in the, and, and some new doors, so as you come into the building, it really will feel a new refreshed um, and um, upgraded space to receive visitors and students alike. Other spaces that uh, were uh, included in the heavy renovation um, are special education support spaces. Uh, and those are in and near the office area. Uh, and, um, and so um, those will get uh, similar upgrades. They'll have new ceilings with new lighting in them. Um, at the OTPT, we'll be installing the supports for uh, the, to suspend equipment such as the swings and, and other um, uh, therapy equipment. And, and, um, and then we'll have new uh, casework, the new shelving and, and cabinetry in the um, in those spaces we'll upgrade the flooring in those to a, a, a rubber flooring which is uh, soft and resilient and very durable uh, and in the new newly configured spaces we'll have uh, new mechanical ventilation units in in those rooms so um, that's kind of the first piece of the scope in those um, we also uh, as mentioned we're going to be creating single user toilet rooms. And so the, the, uh, where we have the single user toilet rooms, we'll, uh, we'll have ceramic tile um, on the walls and the floor, uh, and uh, we'll provide uh, exhaust fans in them. Uh, and, um, and they'll be large enough for, uh, for ADA compliance as well. So um, the new plumbing fixtures and, um, and where we do have drywall, uh, the wall board will use a moisture resistant wall board. In the front of the building, we're uh, relocating the faculty workroom that will get uh, all new finishes as well and new, new casework or cabinetry in that. There'll be also a sink and a little kitchenette area. On the Additions, now we kind of move from the renovation to the additions. So the exterior of the additions uh, will be um, a mixture of brick and some uh, durable cement uh, siding. Again, similar in some ways to the products that were used at Lyseth, just in terms of the, the type of materials that were being used. They're, they're cho chosen for their durability um, at a particular cost point. So we we try to balance the uh, life cycle cost of, of uh, longevity and durability of material with first cost of how much it costs to, to um, um, purchase them and install them. And, uh, and the building additions will also be built to the latest um, uh, sort of state of the art wall uh, construction, which has um, a good insulated um, envelope, we call it, that uh, wraps the, the additions and uh, it keeps, keeps the heat in and also it has a, a membrane or a barrier against moisture and air. And so, uh, so those, um, those will are, um, also help in the LEED certification process as well that Lisa will talk about uh, here shortly. Uh, the windows that we're using are gonna be um, metal, again, durability metal windows that um, have insulated glass in them and, uh, and then we'll use, um, for the entrance areas, we'll also have uh, aluminum um, uh, uh, frames that, uh, that are um, resistant, again, to, to weathering over time. The interior of the additions is using a lot of the similar materials that we talked about in the renovation area, uh, but the, um, the, these include, in some areas, we'll use um, concrete block. So um, there, there are places that we want that durability of, of uh, sometimes referred to as CMU, concrete masonry units, but concrete block. Um, and um, uh, in addition to that, um, we'll have uh, uh, standard wall construction with metal studs and, and drywall. And where we use drywall, we use abuse-resistant drywall so that uh, it takes um, uh, a lot more 
of the day-to-day uh, abuse and, um, uh, and it's more durable than a standard uh, wallboard. For doors, we'll have a solid core door with a um, safety glass insert in it and the locking functions on uh, classrooms and other spaces, occupied spaces will be a security locking mechanism on them uh, in the prevent in the, or in the event of, of an incident where we have to stay in place. Um, and um, we'll also, as, as we mentioned, we'll have uh, card access at the primary entrances around the building uh, that require a, a fob or, or a, a swipe to get into the building. Um, the paint in the, in the hallways, we, we use a more durable paint too. So that's, uh, it's, uh, in, in the, um, areas where, again, we've, we've got, uh, students that are rubbing up against them, the walls and stuff like that, that just adds a layer of durability and, and reduces the amount of maintenance that's required. Uh, moving to, um, the admin area, uh, this, uh, We've talked a little bit about some of these features, but the, the important ones are that we do have a really hardened or secure vestibule that protects the, the sort of eyes uh, of the school. So the, at the admin area, we have um, a rated um, uh, armor core wall with um, a, a security window uh, that um, separates the admin area and receptionist from the security vestibule. We also, in the as, as discussed in the, in the nurses area, we've uh, done a configuration that allows for a, a um, the ability to isolate one of the exam rooms, and um, and as we've talked, also there would be uh, the installation of a UV uh, scrubber, if you will, um, that uh, uh, has been standard that uh, Steve and Doug have been putting in in the schools. And so that, that will also go into the new nurses suite so that uh, we're prepared for the next pandemic uh, if, in, or at, at some, at some point uh, potentially in the future. So um, the other important thing that we do have in the nurses area is a um, roll in shower in the toilet room. Uh, and we also have a washer and dryer and refrigerator in, the, in that area. The um, other areas that we've talked about are these, these little breakout areas. And so they'll have bent, built in benches, which encourage students to, to stop and sit on them. And, um, and they sort of provide these, these um, opportunities again for, for uh, instruction uh, to occur in those areas or in, in also can be used as, a, as an informal gathering spot and even a story time location. The warming kitchen in in the uh, in the cafeteria are new items to um, to the plan here, or, or they're they're currently the, there's a space that's used as a warming kitchen that's not really a warming kitchen off of the gymnasium at Presumpscott. So so they'll have uh, a warming kitchen uh, proper uh, going forward. The um, and it'll have a complement of of just the um, a small supportive kitchen equipment. In that to be able to warm food uh, and to be able to clean um, uh, as necessary. The other thing that uh, the the cafeteria itself will be um, built with with a rubber flooring with um, and with acoustic wall panels to help soften the noise in there and also in a, a, a ceiling that that helps absorb the sound energy. So that's that's the um, probably the, one of the noisiest spots in the entire school. So everything we can do to help keep and manage the noise there is important. Uh, the, as I talked about, the, uh, the new addition has three K rooms and one pre-K room, and those will have uh, rubber flooring like the rest of the additions. They'll have cubbies for the students to store their belongings in, uh, and those will have um, uh, a wall that has instructional technology, but it'll also have other writing surfaces on walls that uh, more than just the one. They'll have toilet rooms within the classrooms themselves. Uh, and um, uh, and those also, as part of the instruction technology, there'll be a sound amplification system, which is uh, very, very 
helpful not only for students that may uh, need a little bit um, higher volume, um, but also studies have shown that it they in, in general helps all learners. Um, and so that the instructor can actually have their normal volume voice amplified as opposed to having to raise their voice. And, and, uh, and so that's a technology that we'll see in all of the classrooms. The art and music rooms, um, uh, one of the features again, I, I don't think that we did mention was that uh, they'll have a kiln for the, and it'll be an enclosed room uh, for safety. Uh, and so that, that'll also uh, be part of the bar between the art and music that uh, has storage in the kiln room that actually helps with sound um, buffering between the music room and the rest of the adjacent spaces. Uh, so that's, that's important. And, and certainly in the art room, uh, ensuring that we have enough sinks for cleanup uh, and uh, not only of supplies, but also of all the many little hands that uh, uh, are creative in their endeavors in the art room. Uh, and with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to Lisa. who'll talk a little bit about um, the renderings uh, and uh, some of the features of the uh, appearance of the new school. Entrance. Excellent. Thank you, Mark. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> and um, excuse me, I just got a uh, uh, tickle in my throat. Um, I get to uh, talk about the uh, exciting imagery of the front entrance. And so um, the addition of the um, admin area allows us to um, create a, a new front to present Scott. And um, we call this roof in, in architecture speak a butterfly roof. Um, so kind of a fun, whimsical um, uh, gesture to, to the school. Um, the gray um, is a cementitious panel, very similar to uh, exact, actually the exact same material as Lyseth's entry. Um, and then the darker um, uh, brown brick area is the new um, addition um, in uh, brick. So the brick flanks the new butterfly um, entrance. And then there's a lot of um, glazing for uh, great visibility to the front entrance. And then the interior. Um, so this would be the new lobby at, at uh, Presumpscot. And um, uh, one of the uh, very noticeable features is the skylight in the center, bringing in lots of natural daylight, um, as well as um, a admin um, that is right off of the secure entrance. So great visibility from the administration area uh, to the front entrance with secure check-in. Um, and then uh, providing some um, nice color um, in the open space and um, a uh, nice pull-off space um, where kiddos and, and parents can gather in the beginning of the school day or at the end and then during school. It can be used as um, what we refer to as a watering hole or a place where um, students and, and faculty can gather and, and sit and learn from one another. Um, mm -hmm. and it provides us a great spot to um, highlight the design statement that the um, District Advisory Building Committee, as well as the BLAC, as well as the greater community for Presump Scott, um, helped us um, uh, create um, uh, in our public forum. And it's been really our, our driver throughout the process. And that reads a welcoming, diverse family, creating spaces for learners to grow, collaborate, and explore. Um, so really excited about um, how this has turned out. Um, and then the, um, Mark's pointing to the, the orange area there. I don't know if you're highlighting the color there, Mark, but we've found uh, great opportunities to use color as a wayfinding mechanism throughout the school. Um, so um, especially at the elementary school um, age, uh, color is, is important for them to identify different locations in the school. It really helps them feel comfortable um, and understand how to navigate uh, the school. So that orange color right there is the entrance to the admin um, and the green um, signifies um, sort of the, the entrance to the special spaces, um, the special education spaces beyond um, that area. And then we've used color throughout the rest of the building as well as a wayfinding tool. Um, so I will roll right into the alternates. Um, there are seven alternates um, and they were ranked um, by the building level advisory committee. 
um, so we could tell what the priorities were. Their number one priority is a new HVAC system. Um, and that is a comprehensive um, system for the whole building. Um, the unit ventilators are um, second on the list, and those are the HVAC that is right inside the classroom. So if number one is taken, it really um, takes care of, of those um, both. Um, number three is replacing all of the interior doors and in hardware. Um, the base scope uh, replaces doors and hardware in those areas impacted in the design. This would give a comprehensive um, <clears throat> new door package to the school, especially off of the corridors and the classrooms. Number four is renovate existing hallways. Um, as Mark mentioned, um, we're not able to um, touch all the spaces in the school um, and one area um, that um, makes it feel like a complete refresh is when you're able to uh, replace or update finishes within the existing hallways. And so this would be new flooring, new ceiling, um, and uh, paint on the walls. Um, and then five is um, uh, direct digital controls, um, which is tied pretty closely to one and two. Uh, since you'll replace those, we'd replace the controls as well. Um, six and seven were a tie. Um, so um, equal um, uh, priorities, the classroom wing nodes. And so those are similar to LISEP, if folks are familiar with that school. Um, where we intentionally created kind of pull-off spaces in the hallway um, using um, areas for kids to sit with a teacher and have one-on-one -on -one instruction and pen up space as well as using color to identify um, uh, what we're calling classroom neighborhoods. So really um, positioning them so they're in the first grade, the second grade, the third, fourth, and fifth, so that it really signifies um, the different grade levels home within the school. And then um, seven would be adding insulation to the existing um, exterior masonry walls. So next we'll uh, update on the budget for Presumpska. And uh, back when we established the classroom scenario 1A, we uh, identified a construction cost of nine point seven five million for the uh, presumpscott school and we used a factor of 25 percent to go from the construction cost to add on what we call soft costs and um and that uh, uh, amounted to 13 million in the uh in our preliminary calculations so now what we've done is reconciled uh a lot of the line items that are um some have been uh, spent uh, and some are continuing to be budget numbers that we're spending too, but we've been able to dial these in uh, to greater detail. And uh, so you, you can see on uh, the budget that there's a, a section A is the construction cost. And so that's, that's all the site work and the um, renovation and the additions. Uh, and so all of that is contained within when in that construction cost. That's what the contractor uh, number that we're gonna ultimately get and plug into that location. And the next item uh, are the administrative costs and reserves. And uh, uh, so that includes the furniture and the equipment that will be purchased to put into the building. Uh, it includes advertisement uh, costs to, uh, to bid the project if, uh, as well as uh, any legal costs. Um, that are paid to um, uh, council for contract uh, review and preparation. And, um, and then there is the project reserves, which is kind of a, a line item that's used uh, for uh, a couple of things. One of which is the identification of any hazardous materials within the building uh, and also for the lead registration. So in addition to, the, uh, to designing it to lead standards, we actually are going to submit it uh, and that uh, has a fee associated with it as well. And then there's the project contingency of, which is 10% of the construction. And, and we've talked about that on the previous projects, but what that project contingency uh, typically is used for is, is uh, half of it we sometimes use as that big contingency to uh, accommodate any adjustments in market pricing. And we have seen 
we have seen some uh, escalation in steel uh, in the last several months. And so that's, uh, you know, that helps by having that big contingency. The other half uh, we establish, uh, we hold on to for conditions that come up during construction. There's going to be a lot of things that are behind walls and above ceilings that we don't know uh, until we open them up. And so this uh, contingency is used to help um, pay for things that we, we haven't been able to see and quantify. And then uh, lastly, there's the fees and services. And that's um, a lot of that goes to the architect and engineers that work on it. Um, and in, in addition to that, there's the uh, owner's representative uh, and the clerk of the works that uh, are assisting in overseeing the uh, progress of the construction and facilitating uh, all the many, many things that um, have to uh, uh, be addressed, uh, information that the contractor needs, um, uh, communication back and forth with uh, Stephen Doug's group uh, and the architects. And so, so those are the CHA, the owner's representative uh, individuals that uh, uh, are on the project that comes out of that fees and services as well. And there are construction testing um, uh, requirements by the code uh, and that also comes out of that area. So when we total all that up, uh, it really um, was just a whisker under the 13 million. So really in essence that uh, that was about where we anticipated it would be. And uh, that worked out uh, pretty well in that regard. And that in the context of all of the BFOF um, budgets, uh, the um, construction cost of 10.5 million for Longfellow, 9.75 million that we just talked about for Presumpscot, and 15.75 million for Reiki. Um, and, um, and then that totals 36 million, which is the, the current um, effort of the three schools that uh, we're working on getting the bids out for now. Adding in the LICETH construction cost, um, that totals 50 million in, in the construction costs. That's those hard costs, the A number or, or the A category on those budgets. And then we add all the soft costs and of the respective projects, and that totals uh, to 64 million, uh, and right now 60, just over 64 million, 84,000. Uh, the bond, again, a reminder that that was 64.26 million, and so so right now we've got a very small reserve of about 176 thousand dollars. And uh, Lisa is the um, lead, uh, lead, she's the lead lead <laughs> on the project. I'm happy to lead us through the lead lead. Um, so the, um, all three projects are going for lead silver certification. Um, and I know this is probably really hard to read because it's a lot of, um, uh, small text, but essentially, um, for those who aren't familiar with LEED, I'll give kind of a high-level overview. Um, it is a third-party certification um, certifying that we have taken a um, comprehensive um, uh, approach to uh, sustainable design. Um, it focuses on um, several categories, and those are in the blue headings on this sheet right here, and I'll read them out quickly just so folks have an I I understanding as to what they are. Um, the overall, they want to make sure we have an integrative process. So we're working with different stakeholders and, and different consultants, um, commissioning agents, um, uh, the complete design team from day one. That's a, um, uh, important, um, the first category is location and transportation, um, making sure, you know, we get points for being in, um, high density areas, um, being close to transportation, public transportation, um, also having, um, uh, you know, the, the walkability to the school as well. Um, then we go into sustainable sites. Um, this really looks at um, open space. It looks at heat island effect, what effect rainwater management um, and construction activity, pollution prevention, and, and many other things around the site. Water efficiency is really looking at conserving water um, through the um, design of any um, irrigation systems or plumbing fixtures. Um, energy and atmosphere is looking at conserving energy. 
Um, this is where we look at um, uh, be, uh, using commissioning as a way to make the systems um, operate as efficiently as designed. And we also look at maximizing um, the energy performance through our uh, design of the renovation as well as our selection of equipment. Um, we also look at um, offsetting um, any of the energy use with um, uh, renewable energy. Um, so the power purchase agreement that the city entered, um, these projects do, do um, are able to get credits uh, for that, which is great. Um, materials and resources, looking at using materials that are um, uh, have high recycled content, um, low um, VOCs, um, are rapidly renewable. Indoor air quality, um, indoor environmental quality, I should say, not just air. Um, really looking at the um, daylight, the connections to views, the, the quality of the air itself. Um, and then innovation. This is looking at different pilot credits or things that are the need is just testing out that we're participating in um, and um, or going well beyond the threshold to which you need to, to achieve a lead credit. And then regional priorities, they identify those credits that really are important to the region that the projects in. Um, different regions throughout the world, different priorities you know, come to mind. Um, uh, and so um, some of those um, for here um, really look at um, uh, surrounding de density and diverse use um, is one that we're going after. Optimized energy performance is another. Um, and so what we have to do in order to get lead silver is have 50 points that we, you know, feel that we can achieve and we're designing towards. We tend to want to have a buffer of about 53 to 55, um, just in case you never know something might not get, um, executed as intended or, the reviewer doesn't have the same interpretation we do. So um, we're happy to say that we're at 54 points um, for Presumpt Scott. So we are comfortably within that threshold um, for targeting lead silver. Great. Uh, the next step, as we discussed, is kind of really where we are with the schedule of each. Longfellow is out to bid right now. And you approved uh, going forward with Reiki tonight, which is exciting. And so that will be next out to bid. And, uh, and this is a first step on getting ready to uh, bid the Presumpscot project, which is slated uh, for advertisement at the end of April. Uh, and then we'll have a contractor meeting on the site in May uh, with bids at the end of May. And so that. Um, that's really exciting. Again, I, I, it's, uh, it's really wonderful to be at this point in the process to, after so many years and hard work on the part of so many people to get this to the point. Uh, so very, very exciting. And I believe it was uh, Superintendent Botana said, and, and there's a lot of, of uh, work ahead of us, but uh, uh, we know uh, we've got capable people and, and uh, it's going to be exciting to see it all take shape. And uh, so for Presumpscot, the, um, uh, as we said, the, the bid uh, is in late April and with a late May opening, uh, we are in the um, process of the planning board approval for Presumpscot. Uh, and, uh, and then um, we will uh, receive the bids. Uh, hopefully we have um, the uh, opportunity to award without going through the value engineering process, but um, but if necessary, we'll do that, and we anticipate groundbreaking this summer. Uh, and so um, right now we're looking at an early June award of the contract, um, so in ground, groundbreaking thereafter. Uh, and, uh, and so uh, our next opportunity, um, or next year, next opportunity to act on this will be at your April 6th board meeting, which will be the vote to go to bid for this. So, uh, Mark, can you talk about the, the duration of the project? I'm sorry, maybe. You oh, yeah, absolutely. That. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, um, the presumption school project is the shortest of the three projects, actually the shortest of all four of the BFOF elementary school projects. And that is because um, we're not doing an extensive amount of work in those light gray areas that we 
uh, had shown on the, on the plan. And so a lot of the work is the addition, which can go on uh, on the site. And, and while there will be an impact to operations around the site, the idea is that they can be constructing that uh, while school is in session. Uh, and so, uh, so there's not a lot of interior phasing of, of taking students and putting uh, students from one area of the school into the modular classrooms and then creating that swing space and, and that that doesn't exist at Presumpscott for the planned improvements. So uh, right now, uh, the intent is to award this summer, uh, have the two full summers, the summer of 2021 and the summer of 2022, um, and then and that whole year in between, and, uh, and then be back online for the start of school in the fall of 2022. So that's, that's uh, a markedly uh, shorter duration than the other schools, again, primarily because there's not the need for swing space to move students out and renovate uh, while you're doing that work. So uh, we anticipate um, that that 15-month uh, uh, construction duration um, is, uh, is what we're looking at for Presumpscott. Thank you. And with that, uh, that uh, concludes kind of our, our update on this as we prepare to bid it. And we're certainly willing to entertain any questions by the board. Thank you so much. I'm going to start with Ms. Russell Better. Oh, my goodness. I was just getting chills listening to all of that. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I just have to take a minute to thank Carmen and... Um, PPS staff, Steve and Doug, and our Presumpscott community members who worked on this for years. I mean, I'm just thinking about like the past five years that I've been involved with this. And I feel really lucky that my kids are five years apart because my fifth grader who's finishing this year when I started getting involved with this bond process was in kindergarten and she's going to be gone. But I have a little one who I just selfishly am so happy I get to see this um, come to fruition. And I know so many Teachers that have been engaged in this are going to be thrilled um, and to just hear all of those details is so satisfying to just hear like the fruition of not having modulars and the bathrooms that we need and that front entry space is amazing and thinking about the specialists who have to move between spaces all day long and so just to like see the concrete reality of what that space is going to be is just incredible so um, yeah I just wanted to share my excitement about everything so um yeah it's just just amazing news and to have our principal share oh in the summer we're not going to be having summer programming because we're <laughs> starting this project is just like wow um really happening so oh um i just had one question mark and um lisa that i just couldn't recall how this ended up so maybe you guys can help me with this about the end is there a separate entrance i mean i, I there's an entrance now that maybe is going to still be there. That's like the kindergarten hallway now. So I don't know if we can look at, but I mean, when we were talking about the gym, which isn't happening, you know, being renovated, we were talking about a separate entrance like for that use. So since that's not happening, I just couldn't remember if there's any separate entrance being created um, and just where that was left. Yeah, so, th so th there's a, a couple things in thinking about entrances to, okay. to schools. Um, and there's a pair of doors shown to the rear of, of the building, and there's a pair of doors right here. So it is possible that you could uh, use this, um, uh, and you could even close down the, the kindergarten wing and just leave uh, the cafeteria open if you wanted to, to just use, use that area of... Uh, of the building. Um, primarily what we'd like to do though is, is have a very clear identifiable single entrance and that really reinforces the whole notion of security that, that it's an observed entrance um, and so that um, multiple entrances typically is, is something we, we try to get away from in thinking about normal use of, of the building but after hours entrance uh, is a different uh, story so that you can actually have the flexibility um, of, of potentially using, you know, a, a, an, an entrance. There's also a door to the rear here that, and, and we need doors because of egress uh, from the building safely 
getting a number of people out. Um, but we also, these are, all these entrances are uh, card access and so you can program them um, to be either locked or unlocked. Okay, thank you. It does seem to me like the front would still, I mean, even if it was about, you know, basketball nights and everything, it seems like that really would make the most sense. I think maybe when we were discussing it, you know, way back, it must have been more in the thought of if the community was going to be using um, a space, you know, that was separate from, which, you know, that's not even something that's happening now anyway. And without the gym piece, like maybe that wasn't, but that makes sense to me what you're saying, like that the front entrance really is the safest to use, but okay. But there is another entrance that's part of the addition. Absolutely. I think what I was thinking of with the kinder the, is in the existing gray area. There's an entrance over there. So I think, I, okay. So that is. Yeah. There, there, it, yeah. And, and there's still, again, we, we, there's, you know, this side entrance over here. Um, there's still the entrance at the end of the, the uh, classroom wings. Um, but again, the idea is that, that we, we don't really want uh, those to become uh, reinforced as the ways of entering and exiting the building. And so, um, and so we will have, as mentioned earlier, we'll actually have monitors on those doors, um, and uh, and when they they are opened, uh, it'll be uh, a notification to the administration area that a door has been been moved or, or opened. Uh, so, so, great, thank you so much. Miss Bondo, hand is up. Miss Bondo. Thank you. Thank you, Mark and Lisa, for the presentation. This is so exciting. I'm so glad and we come to the end of the, the last school. I just have my question is about the time frame, Mark and Lisa, because when I heard about the press up, we don't have a lot of renovation, a lot of construction. So I mean, like I heard you say, Mark, then we we don't have to remove students uh, more than supposed to be Iraqi or Longfellow because of those less construction. So I'm just, I, I, I wonder about the Rocky and Longfellow. Are we going to be focused on doing most of the construction during summer? And uh, this is the large part and about during the school year, what's gonna happen? I just want to see, are we going to start moving students when the school is in session or if we're going to do so, so what kind of option we have to move those students where what space, uh, what kind of capacity we have to move them on the side. That's yeah, not, Lisa, you want it? That's yeah, Lisa, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. And I think, I think the question that's, was a little bit about all three schools um, yes, and, yes, just, and where we're going to move, move students. So mm -hmm. um, I'll start here with Presump Scott. Um, okay. You have the portables already and we're going to relocate those. So mm -hmm. those programs will be relocated on site within the portables. Okay. You're correct that we won't impact the, the classroom spaces um, very much here. And if we do, it's going to be done during the summers. Um, so there's very little impact, um, very little movement of classes in this school. Um, that's a different story for Reiki and, and Longfellow. Um, and we are bringing portables temporarily onto those sites. And we will be creating what we're calling them construction pods to where we're taking a series of classrooms every you know um uh, about halfway through the year so from the start to halfway through the year those classrooms will be out in the portables and then their spaces will be renovated they'll move back in and the next classrooms will move into the portables their spaces will be renovated move back in and we do that for about two years um, as we move um, a series of classrooms out to portables we've set up the construction schedule so that the moving occurs during breaks um, and so there's um, uh, time to get student the classroom set up before the school year starts mm -hmm. um, and then they'll move back in um, at winter break um, and and so on and so forth okay so just uh, speaking aloud so the way presump uh uh presump has a less less uh, construction innovation so which are the those are three schools can be done the first Presumpscot will be um, has the, the shortest duration of construction, um, and is why we had had it um, at the uh, as the last one out to bid because we have the most flexibility with the time frame. All right, I was yeah, I was thinking the same way. Thank you so much. Thank you for the presentation. You're welcome. Are there any other questions? Um, 
I just like to personally thank the Harriman team as well as the um, our operations staff, um, Steve Silfen and Doug Sherwood. Um, we are um, at a such such an important milestone to see the fourth project um, all the way through to this to this phase. So thank you so much for all of your work, um, Mr. Superintendent. Did you want to? conclude the workshop with any um, specific remarks? Just, you know, same thing. Thank um, the facilities team and the Harriman team. Um, exciting times and, you know, so very excited. Thank you so much. And we'll have a chance to vote on um, this project on April 6th. So that concludes the workshop. Um, thank you so much, everyone, and good night. Um, and I hope everyone has a good rest of the night.